Professor Franco Duran Oscar from Cambridge, UK, and the title is Chocolate Consumption and Cardiometabolic Disorders, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. Good morning. Um, so this is the title of the article that is actually coming to publication today in the BMJ and will be presented tomorrow as, an, as a poster. Um, competing interests, I, I don't have a major competing interest to declare, but, and there is a but, um, we all but one admit cho uh, craving chocolate regularly. Um, I will stick to the five minutes, but uh, just spare with me one minute uh, to share with you a little bit of the history of chocolate, which is which I find fascinating. Uh, chocolate doesn't just uh, grow in factories like Willy Wonka's. Actually, grows from a, from a tree, as you can see here. Is Theobroma cacao is called, and Theobroma for those that are Greek here in the audience, correct me if I'm wrong. Theobroma means the food of the gods. Um, it's originally from the Amazon basin. And then it was domest domesticated by the Mayans and the Aztecs that used to consume it in a bitter drink. That's what means chocolate uh, means bitter drink. And they didn't add sugar to it because they didn't have sugar, so they added chili and they added vanilla. Um, history says that the first European that came across with chocolate or with cacao was Christophorus Columbus and thought, what are these ugly looking black almonds? Later on, the, the Dominicans and again, thanks to the, many of the religious orders, uh, brought it to Spain in the time uh, of Hernán Cortés that came to Mexico. And the Spanish kept a secret for almost 100 years enjoying this uh, great food. Uh, ever since it has spread, it has become very popular. Uh, so popular this morning, a dear colleague of mine, when I mentioned that I was going to talk about chocolate, took out three chocolates out of his pocket and offered me to choose one. Um, for many years had been used as, um, as a medicine, and it used to be even used as a currency by the Aztecs and also by the Spanish in the 16th and 17th century. There are different studies that suggest that chocolate is good for you. It reduces blood pressure. It can improve the metabolism of sugar. But there are not uh, sufficient studies or there, there wasn't any meta-analysis showing or demonstrating a potential association between chocolate and developing heart attacks, myocardial infarction, or a stroke. And this is what we try to do in this study. We try to gather all the available evidence regarding the association of chocolate consumption and uh, cardiovascular events. As with every meta-analysis, well, we st start looking at all the available evidence, and then after uh, a systematic selection of the studies that, that are found, uh, a few that fit with the, with the conditions that you specified previously are selected. In this case, there were seven studies selected, four of those published last year. So this is all very recent information. In total, there were over 100,000 individuals from USA, Japan, the Netherlands, Sweden, and Germany. I'm going to show you the results in the coming slide. And uh, this is putting together all the different studies and looking at whether there was an effect. We see, for example, that for any cardiovascular disease or a stroke, there were relative risk, pool relative risk of 0.63 and 0.71, which in other words mean approximately a 30% reduction of cardiovascular events. All of these studies had adjusted for different factors, different confounding factors, uh, namely age, gender, smoking, blood pressure, cholesterol, etc. There is always the case in observational studies, and I must highlight this, this is only observational studies. There is always the case that there might be residual confounding, which means that some factors were not measured, not taken into account properly, and therefore causation cannot be derived from these findings. What we see is promising results, at least for me and the co-authors that we like chocolate. Chocolate consumption could contribute to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. Some questions remain about the dose. We were not uh, able to distill the exact dose that will be beneficial because um, those 100, over 100,000 participants were asked regarding the frequency. And as an approximate number, there was uh, the low group were consuming less than two pieces of chocolate per week, and the higher group was, were consuming more than two pieces of chocolate per week. 
Uh, also in these questionnaires, there were not a specific questions about the type of chocolate. So some questions remain regarding the specific type. We have seen in previous experimental studies that dark chocolate seems to be more beneficial than the other types of chocolate. But from our study, we cannot drive, uh, derive this conclusion. Further to this, as I was mentioning earlier, this is only based on observational studies. Yes, it's 100,000 people, yes, it's from many countries, but it's observational. There hasn't been any experiment done in this population. So we need further experimental evidence that will confirm whether we actually have a room for chocolate in the tools to prevent cardiovascular disease, or this is just, um, just a myth. What is very important as well is that with our findings, we are not in, in at no moment trying to recommend those that are not eating chocolate to start eating chocolate. We are not recommending to change the guidelines for healthy diets. They should remain as they stand. And perhaps the, the, the recommendation will be for those that are already eating chocolate to eat it in a moderate way, in moderate amounts, in a regular manner, and not just sitting down and eating all the chocolate they can eat in a single occasion. So moderation is key and balance as always. Overindulgence should be avoided. It is also important to note that contrary to the chocolate that was available to the Aztecs and the Mayans, uh, the majority of the chocolate products that are available commercially contain high levels of fats and sugars and therefore high levels of calories. And we know that eating too much chocolate can help you to gain some weight. So it is important uh, to bear this in mind, overindulgence to be avoided, and efforts from industry to reduce the content of fats and reduce the content of sugar by maintaining the extraordinary, extraordinary sensorial experience should be about, um, explored. Thank you for your attention. Questions? How big are these pieces of chocolate? As I said, we, we don't have information about the quantity. The questions were about the frequency. How big? Bearing in mind the contents in terms of fats and, and sugar and the calories that chocolate might have, um, what I would say based on previous knowledge is that the quantity shouldn't be large. Can you be any more specific? I, I can't be specific beyond the findings of my study. There are previous studies that have shown that the 50 grams per day, some people say 20 grams per day, but not based on the, on the findings. Again, it's very important to bear in mind that there are uh, overconsumption of chocolate, or consuming chocolate in large quantities might have deleterious effects that will counteract the beneficial effects of chocolate consumption. What's the mechanism of decreasing coronary heart disease? This is always a very di difficult and good question. What is the mechanism for chocolate? Uh, many people have tried to answer this question, have tried to identify what is the molecule, what is the chemical principle that actually lead chocolate to reduce cardiovascular disease. Different theories exist. Different chemicals and, and products have been suggested. What we find always when we try to simplify the complex structure of elements and put it into a single element, when we go and test this in terms of pills or try to look at the effect, we see that it's not effective. What is clear, or my opinion is, that foods are very complex structures where multiple substances interact and contribute uh, together to have a beneficial effect. Yes? Hi. Just to follow up on that, could you just go a little bit more into detail about what components you think are interacting? Well, there are many components that have been suggested. Uh, chocolate is one of the um, elements that contains the highest levels of antioxidants, but we are all aware that antioxidants have proven to be effective and some are not. Chocolate also contains additional uh, substances like theobromine, who has been suggested to be beneficial not only for cardiovascular disease, but also for treating cough, for example. Um, so it's, it's, there are different theories. Now putting a finger into what is the factor that is actually contributing might be difficult. It could be also that the, the sensorial experience of chocolate is contributing to improve quality of life. And that could be one of the mechanisms that chocolate is helping to prevent cardiovascular disease. But this is um, a speculation. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> is there any evidence that um, chocolate increases endorphins 
or indeed reduces uh, stress hormones like cortisol? Yeah, there's some evidence that uh, it increases endorphins and that contribute to the sensorial experience of, of consuming chocolate. That could, that, that could be another mechanism. It's just, as I said, there's multiple theories about multiple substances that could be contributing all together to have a beneficial effect. Yeah. Could we double the effect with the red wine? S sorry, you, you mean if you can have a chocolate and have could, a glass of red could wine? Could we double the effect with red wine? This is an and, uh, uh -huh. taking the bicycle to go to buy it. But that is a fantastic. Uh, <laughs> that would be a fantastic recommendation uh, if we put together all the presentations of today. So we bike as in Copenhagen with intensity, not just with duration. Uh, we didn't hear about red wine. Um, I'm not sure about the snaps. Sorry, uh, but but uh, yes, it's multiple factors that can be put together. Uh, whether they are additive, whether if you consume red wine and chocolate and then bicycle riding is going to be beneficial, it's very likely that it's going to be the case. I prefer coffee with chocolate. But <laughs> if there are no... Just last question. Hello, I'm uh, from Slovenia, freelance journalist. Uh, I would like to know who sponsored your... Uh... My study? Yeah. It was sponsored by my wife, mainly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it I'm was kidding. not a it's... chocolate factory. No, this is, there was no funding source. It was, um, I'm, I'm just fascinated with the history of chocolate, and, and we just tried to look at the, at the evidence. My wife didn't uh -huh. pay for the study, sorry. It was a, it was a joke. Um, no, there was no funding source. No funding source. Yeah. Uh, I remember a few years ago an American Cardiology Congress, uh, there was a presentation of uh, uh, such a study, but they uh, studied also the mechanism of action and they told us that uh, chocolate, but only dark chocolate without added milk, improves uh, the endothelial function. Do, do you know that? Yes. Uh, so. As I said, from this study, with the evidence that we gathered, there was no difference, they, they were not able to differentiate about the types of chocolate. There are previous studies, probably the one you are citing among, among others, that specified the type of chocolate, and what they had found is the dark chocolate is more beneficial. So based on these previous experimental studies, my advice would be that dark cho chocolate is preferable, but not based on the studies that we have, because we couldn't differentiate. Okay. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for your interest, interaction. It is reassuring that there are healthy...